a riddle for you guys. What looks like Msasa grows right next to Msasa and isn't a msasa. What is it? It is of course Jubinadia globiflora, the Mnondo tree. How's it guys? I'm Gus the African plant hunter. I am going completely stir crazy in this lockdown so I thought I'd go and take a walk in the bush just by my home and show you some of the trees of the beautiful characteristic Miombo woodland. Starting with this one Mnondo, which is by far the most common tree in the whole of Zimbabwe. So uh, similar to the Msasa, the Mnondo bark is traditionally used to make bark cloth, uh, although it's not considered to be of as good quality as Msasa. Where it is superior to Msasa is in the quality of the timber, particularly used in construction. Uh, many, many, many traditional African houses in this part of the world are built with poles from Mnondo. Uh, it's also used to burn bricks, also again in construction, and it is a popular cooking firewood. You'll find it in the bakwa, which is the kitchen firewood pile, uh, very commonly. It does give off some pretty unpleasant smoke, but it burns beautifully and long. Medicinally, there are a wide range of traditional uses. The bark is used to treat diarrhea, also put in the eye for conjunctivitis. Uh, it's also used to reduce the size of the vaginal canal. The leaves have a traditional use of decoction of them for um, snake bite and the stem when you remove the bark and then you get into the stem that's pounded up and applied topically to leprosy sores. And then finally when you get to the root the root bark has uh, traditionally been used, powdered up uh, and consumed internally to treat depression. Just talk you quickly through the differences between Msasa and Mnondo. The first place you're going to look is at the leaves. As you can see they're both compound leaves. Uh, difference, this is Msasa, this is Mnondo. The Msasa generally has between three and four pairs of leaflets and as they go down the leaf they get larger. So the largest pair of leaflets are the terminal ones. The Mnondo has generally between four and six leaflets and you'll see that the leaflets in the middle are generally larger than the ones at the end. So when you're looking up at a tree quite high up, uh, that's always, I find, the easiest way to tell. Uh, when you look closely, the shape of the leaflets is also significantly different. You've got a more kind of oblong shape to the Mnondo. You've got a more kind of rhomboid shape to the Msasa. Uh, the Msasas also look more kind of glossy green. The Mnondos have a sort of matte, slightly velvety look to them. Another easy way to tell the difference when the pods are out is to look at the tree from a distance and with the Mnondo you'll notice that the pods are stuck out high up above the foliage on the very top of the tree. Whereas with the Masasa the pods are found within the branches within the foliage and you kind of have to look for them. If you look closely at the pods, you'll also see a significant difference. The Mnondo pods are distinctively velvety, whereas the Masasa pods are quite smooth. And finally, the, the last difference or significant and obvious difference between them is in terms of the flowering time. So the Mnondo flower very early in the year, January, February, March, during the rainy season, whereas the Masasa's uh, flower before the start of the rainy season, late in the year, around September, October time. So that is how you tell the difference between a Masasa and a Mnondo. And that about sums up Mnondo Jubinoidea globiflora. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's plenty more on my YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, AfricanPlantHunter.com. I do hope to see you again. Take it easy. Bye.